What I'd like to do is, is create a puzzle for you, or to grid a puzzle, and to make it more difficult, I will use some suggestions for words from you, the audience. I mean, you kind of see it and you're like, okay, you're the awesomest person ever. Like, you know, you can make your own crossword in front of a million people, and also there's a magic trick involved. Like, it's, it's really impressive. He's like a superhero of <laughs> crossword and, and, and prestidigitation and words. Starting with G, prefix meaning stomach. Gastro. Gastro. Because I can My name is David Kwong, and I'm from Rochester, New York. And I've always been a word nerd. What's very important to me is the presentation of magic. And in my shows and in my performances, I try to have an air of sophistication almost. I, I try to bring it back to the golden age of magic, the 19th century, where magicians were performing in drawing rooms and parlors. And I think magic has gone too far in the Las Vegas direction. I try to bring it back to a classier era. Four letters, Nobel Peace Prize City, OS blank blank. Oslo. Oslo. And I think my crossword puzzle trick is my way of bringing back sophistication into magic shows. I guess you could say I'm very type A. I definitely have an addictive personality, which is probably why I'm drawn to both crossword puzzles and magic. I think both pursuits involve you know, meticulous research and, and pouring over one thing until it's perfect, whether you're trying to make all the words fit perfectly or you're practicing a sleight of hand move until it's flawless. Uh, it's just sort of the obsessive personality that I have. When I was at Harvard, I was a history major and I was immediately drawn to the history of entertainment and vaudeville and all the magicians from the golden age. This is Greater Magic, John Northern Hilliard. I loved going into the libraries and poring over Houdini's old documents and, and all these cool magic tomes and, and learning what these performers were like. How's New York? It's great. It's cold. Not here. I know. One of my good friends, Kevin Chosett, I've known since college. And after college, he made a brilliant crossword puzzle for the New York Times, which got me hooked immediately. And I wanted to learn how to make them myself, and he showed me the ropes. And together, we started uh, creating tricky and devious puzzles that we submit to this day. Well, we probably anger the old guard a little bit, but we're always trying to bend the rules. I moved out to Los Angeles to work for Ricky Jay, who is a brilliant sleight of hand artist and historian. And this is what introduced me to the art of storytelling. And so I transitioned into development in the film industry. And now I work for DreamWorks Animation. I try to practice every day um, just to keep the, the fingers fresh. So I take a 10 and just rub it here. I can change it to another card. Here in Los Angeles, I still perform magic all the time. And I've managed to fuse it with my career in Hollywood. Right now, I am driving to a very lovely home where I will give a private magic show for some of my coworkers and their friends. It's very difficult for magicians to come up with new tricks and new illusions because the same moves, the same slights, have been used for hundreds of years. So I'm very proud of this crossword puzzle trick because it's something that I've invented and created, and I do think I'm the only one in the world who can do it. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. It took me well over a year to develop my crossword puzzle feat, but one could argue that I've been working on it for 30 years because it really does draw from all the pointless information that I've accrued over my lifetime. I'm going to create a New York Times worthy crossword puzzle with the help of a live audience, and there's a twist. I'm going to look away, slide it out, all right? Still sliding. Still sliding. Yeah, slow slider. Okay. And okay. hold that up for everybody to see. Okay? A lot of people want to know how to make a crossword puzzle for the New York Times, the LA Times, uh, Games Magazine. So it's either red or black, right? Yes. And it always starts with a theme or some sort of trick that you want to play in the puzzle. Jack, queen, king, okay. I'm having difficulty with you. I will uh, come back to that. 
Once you have your theme entries, you have to place them in the grid, and then you have to fill in the black boxes, and of course you're only allowed a certain number of them. And the fewer black boxes you use, the longer the words are. So you have a harder puzzle and perhaps a more prestigious puzzle if you use fewer black boxes. How about also a U.S. president? Any? Jeff. Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland. I like that. Grover Cleveland. I love it's magic hard. because I love being on the other side of the curtain. I like knowing how things work. And when I am fooled by another magician, I do get that moment of, of awe. But then I immediately want to know how it was done. Writer Sorkin. Aaron. Aaron. Oh, you know you're in LA when everyone is there. <laughs> and I think the same can be said for crossword puzzles. I love being behind something that millions of people do every single day. What is your favorite Papua New Guinea seaport? Is it Lai, L-A-E? <laughs> <laughs> United Airlines, United Airlines. In our modern world that's inundated with media and information, I think the crossword puzzle is a return to asking something of you rather than bombarding you with new information. We'll do the surname, Estes, say, which is these in French. We have an abbreviation for answer. Speaking Sie Deutsch, stat, reps and sets aside, and that's the New York Times crossword. And I mentioned before that a theme answer is often placed in the lower right-hand corner of the grid. SOD is not landscaper supply, but rather the seven of diamonds. Oh. <laughs> is it SOD was not clear enough for you? I've also written backwards the S E V E N O F D I A N D S. That's the seven of diamonds. That's your card, and that's the magic of crossword. <laughs>